Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with another slimline card using some of the newer Honey Bee Stamps products, which I'll get to in a minute. First, I'm going to create my background and I'm going to go old school and do some ink smushing, my favorite thing to do with distress inks, distress oxides, etc. And today I'm using Distress Oxide inks, and I'm using uh, Carved Pumpkin and Candied Apple and Seedless Preserves, because those are the colors for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge, which is like the perfect fall leaves color. So I smushed my ink pads onto my tonic nonstick craft mat, sprayed it with my Distress Sprayer to get all the little blobs of water, pressed some Distress watercolor paper into it. And I'm making a hot mess and I love it. <laughs> so you do not need a heat embossing tool to do this, but it does help to have something to help it dry so that you can do the layers. Otherwise it's going to take forever because there's a lot of water, a lot of ink, that sort of thing. So I did it first, the one layer, dried it, added a teensy bit more water, and then just keep pressing it into there. I've done tons of videos over the, on this technique over the years. It's the beauty is in the layers. If things start to get really muddy, like, you know, the colors are just starting to mix and it's looking like a brown sludgy mess, wipe it up, add some fresh color, and then you're good to go. The neat thing with distress oxides is even though I'm using like a purple and an orange, which technically will make like a muddy color, um, oxides layer in a really cool way. So I just kept going in. I ended up doing about three layers. Once I got to this third layer though, I'm not gonna dry it. I just kind of set it aside for a minute. But the more you use up the ink, it gets to finer and finer, like a splattery look, which is always the funnest part. But I pressed it in and then I just set this aside. I quickly wiped down my uh, craft mat here to get rid of what is turning into a mess. Um, doing things like this, I get ink all over me. <laughs> if it really bothers you, you can wear gloves. I honestly find by the end of the day, with the amount of hand washing, hand sanitizer, all that stuff, um, it like almost all the traces of ink are gone so I don't worry about it but anyway wiped everything off and then I pulled out my Gonsi, Gonsai Tombi Starry Colors watercolor set and my absolute favorite which is this gold shade and I'm mixing up some of this you just add water really mix it up and I'm kind of splattering it on but I'm not wanting the splatter look I just need to get it on here first so I'm using my big old paintbrush here and just adding that and I'm actually just flipping this over and pressing it I just want the color to kind of move and just somewhat splattery but somewhat organic in a sense you know I don't want that like specific splatter look that I'm usually going for with things hence me letting there, there there's a few wet areas so the color is just kind of moving with it and you'll see it especially at the end of the video I'll tilt everything in the light it just oh. so I ended up doing this whole thing twice ended up with two pieces with these colors and um, I did post this on my Instagram just the finished backgrounds as they are because they're fabulous <laughs> the colors with the gold uh, I could I this I could create like this like all day every day for a good week or two before I got tired of it anyway I did all that everything's dry and now I'm using the uh, Honey Bee Lovely Layers Maple Leaf Wafer Die Set I'm going to die cut my splattery backgrounds with the solid wafer die from the set. And then the outline wafer die with all the detail, I die cut from some gold glitter cardstock. And I die cut the splatter backgrounds with that solid leaf and got several pieces. And then I have a couple pieces of the outline, and then I'll use those on my card later. And then I die cut some Nina Desert Storm cardstock with the new that's the Slimline Sentiments Blanket wafer die, which has this fun, like blanket edge to it as well as a piercing kind of detail all around the edge really fun die I was quite impressed with how well it die cut that finicky little um like frayed edge all around it so I die cut the desert storm cardstock from that I have it in my misty here and I'm going to stamp this with the farmhouse check background which is a clear background so I still have my foam insert in my misty and I've lined up the stamp along like basically the top of my misty here and it's obviously not going to cover this entire slimline card and i've inked it up with golden glitz delicata ink my favorite of all time 
every time I pull this out, I start using it again. I'm reminded of how much I love it. So I stamped it. I didn't purpose. I purposely didn't ink up the stamp like evenly or anything. I wanted kind of an uneven look. And then all I did was flip the background around. Since this is a clear background stamp, it was pretty easy to line it up with the previous design. So I just kind of kept nearly closing the lid, seeing where things were, and then lining up. In the end, it honestly doesn't matter. I didn't even need to spend the two minutes I did doing this because uh, you're not going to see it anyway. Um, and then I just inked up the stamp again, and I was a little heavy-handed anyway, so you can see the difference between the two. But again, it's not going to matter because, you know, there's going to be stuff in the way. But that's one way to kind of line up stamps. It's kind of nice with a clear background stamp like that. It's actually easy to line it up. So I set that aside to let that Delicata Golden Glitz ink dry because that is a pigment ink. It does take a little bit longer to dry. I also highly recommend, every time I use this, I try to remind people, I highly recommend if you don't have one um, or if you're planning on getting an ink pad like that to get the refill as well. And I'll link to both because it's a heavier pigment ink. You use up a lot more and it's really handy. I have used my refill many, many times and I've had this ink pad for years. I can't even remember how many times I've refilled it now. I don't even know. Anyway, heat embossed sentiments from the autumn. Um, is there a different? It's just, is it just autumn? Yeah, the autumn stamp set. I gold heat embossed them onto some of Simon's 120 pound smooth white cardstock. And then I'm just ink blending that seedless preser preserves distress oxide ink onto it so I can get perfect match. A lot of times I'll just dig through, you know, my cardstock stash because I have a ton. And I can usually find a color that matches, but I thought, you know what, I've got everything sitting out here. I'll just do some quick ink blending and make everything match. So I did that with the sentiments I heat embossed. And then I'd also, of course, have the autumn wafer die set. So the word I die cut and did the same thing, just blended that ink right on top of it. And then I'd also die cut some more Desert Storm cardstock with uh, one of the outlines with the autumn set. Because if with Honeybee's word wafer dies, there's the word... There's the first outline and then there's a second outline that has um, like a piercing detail. And this one I die cut from the Desert Storm and I'm blending on the candied apple and the carved pumpkin just to give it that orangey red look. And because I die cut this from Desert Storm, it, it creates a more muted look. If I'd done white cardstock, the colors would be a lot more vibrant, but I wanted it to be a little bit more muted. And then the first outline I die cut from that same gold glitter paper. And then while I had everything out, I decided to take that blanket uh, die cut that I'd stamped with the farmhouse check background and just lightly blend just on the very edges, just on the, the um, frayed edges with that carved pumpkin, just to give it a little extra something. So I just went around those edges and just added that little bit of ink just to give it a little extra something. And then for my card base, it's Simon's heavyweight, again, 120 pound white cardstock that I'd cut to seven inches by eight and a half, scoring it at three and a half with my Teflon bone folder. So this will be a three and a half inch by eight and a half inch slimline card. So I scored that with my bone folder, reinforced that fold with the side of my bone folder. And now I am going to start adhering everything. And I'm going to use just craft tacky glue to adhere all this. So I'm going to adhere the background to the card base and then I've got all of my leaf and outline leaf die cuts as well as the sentiment here. Sentiment again adhering with the craft tacky glue. My thing with glitter cardstock is if you're adhering anything on top of glitter cardstock like this autumn word, liquid glue or foam tape. Any like a tape runner that sort of thing most of the time one a tape runner would be a pain in the butt with a tiny little die cut like this but also it just doesn't want to stick. Glitter is, is notorious Gl and glitter card stocks can be a little bit finicky, but if you want things to adhere, a good liquid glue and or like foam dimensionals, foam tape, that sort of thing really helps to like stick stuff down. So I did that with the layers of the autumn word and then the leaves I'm also adhering with craft tacky glue. The solid ones, super easy. The outline ones, I just added little dots of glue here and there I'm not going to cover every little bit. It's not necessary. So I just added little dots here and there and then adhered it all into place. So I saved one of the solid leaves because I'm going to add that to the inside of the card just to finish it off. So I've got my solid leaves and then my outline gold leaves. These can layer and are meant to like layer together as one piece, but I decided to do it all 
kind of separately because these just I wanted to show as much of the like splattery background solid leaf die cuts because they're just fabulous. So I decided to adhere them that way. And then the autumn word I'm going to adhere with the craft tacky glue. And I'm just going to hold that down in place because I'm adhering it on top of glitter cardstock. And then the little blessings word, I just cut that down off camera with my paper trimmer after I'd ink blended on top of it. And then um, that I'm adhering with just some thin 3D foam squares. And then on the inside of the card, I'm going to adhere that leaf and then the remaining sentiment from the autumn stamp set. So got that pressed into place. And then of course, I'm gonna add some more bling. Because <laughs> the gold shimmer, I got the gold shimmer, the gold glitter, and I need one more thing, you know, to get the trifecta of awesomeness. So <laughs> I pulled out my Studio Cadia Gold Sparkle Crystals. Sprinkle those all throughout. These, again, if you're not familiar, are one of my favorite embellishments. They're just clear crystals with gold glitter in them. Love it. So put those all over the place. Again, I'm not following any rhyme or reason. I'm just stuck them wherever I, you know, can because it's a big card and there's lots of space. So once I was happy with where those were, I adhered them into place with dabs of the Craft Tacky Glue and my little Studio Cadia embellishment wand. And that finished off this card. So like I'd mentioned earlier in the video, this is for this week's color throwdown challenge. I will link to that challenge in my blog post. My blog post will be the first link directly below the video in the description box and then I'll have a supply list linked everything I used so you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, thumbs up and commenting. I really appreciate it and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!